Welcome students to another video lecture with Mr. Kinnett. Uh, as you can see, we're moving on to a new chapter, chapter six. We're using the percent proportion. And uh, as you start copying this down, I want you to think to yourself, what skill we're going to have to recycle here since we're solving proportions. Uh, go ahead and pause here and copy down what you see. Leave some space in that proportion column for us to write examples. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. So we're going into chapter six here, 6.1, using the percent proportion. And what we're trying to do is how can we solve percent proportions? That's our essential question. And uh, the percent proportion is pretty simple. Uh, it's going to be part over whole equals percent over 100. And notice that's a ratio equaling another ratio. So we can recycle a skill we've already learned. Uh, so think, what is that skill? Hey, so what this table is de demonstrating is there's three kind of ways they could write this problem. And I wanted to show you, you may notice that these numbers look quite similar. And that's actually because it is setting up the problem uh, quite similarly. It's actually the same problem written three different ways. So right now, one is what percent of five. Okay, so the is normally goes with the part and the of is usually the whole. Usually, it's careful. We can't always say whole, always. So the way we set this up is it's going to be a proportion setup. We're going to put one on the numerator for the part, five as the whole. We don't know what the percent is, which means that's the unknown. And we always know the minute they say percent, the hidden number when they say percent is 100. And that's how we'd set up that first example, finding the percent. So now we're moving on finding the part. So what number is 20% of 5? And again, the of normally connects to the whole. So they don't know what the is part is. So that's our unknown. We know it's of 5, the total, and it equals 20%. So that's 20 over 100. Okay, and now finding the whole part here. 1 is 20% of, oh, we don't know what number. So they gave us the part. We don't know what the whole is. And we know when they say 20%, that's going to be 20 over 100. So again, that's just three different ways of finding the percent, finding the part, finding the whole, but I use the same numbers to model how it could set up. So let's go ahead and start using this. So we've got example one, and I'll ask you to pause to copy what you see. Welcome back. Okay, so not too long of a problem. It's a little blurry. That, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to interact with my problem, circle the things I care about, 78 is 60% of, oh, we don't know what the number is. So let's just go see which one that is similar to. Is that similar to finding the percent, finding the part, or the finding the holes wording? And I don't want you to always memorize the word, like these this table here, but it is a good reference to begin with when we haven't figured it out yet. So 78 is the part of normally connects to the whole and there's no number there so that has to be an x equals 60 over 100 and uh, we set the problem up and i don't want to ruin that skill we're going to recycle here so i'm going to leave it at that and we'll solve that problem in class and we're going to move on to example two here uh, pause once again and copy down what you see Okay, welcome back. Um, so this is kind of like an Alex question that we're going to be provided. And again, like all of our questions, we should interact. Uh, the movie club surveyed 300 high school students. Um, that seems to be all the numbers of students that are listed in this table down here. So they sometimes give you the total number, which is the same as the whole. But if they don't, all you would do is add up all the numbers in the table that represent unique students. So we know there's 300 in here, and if you don't trust that, you can always double check by summing all those students in there. 
And we have a two-part question here. It's asking what percentage, so we're having to find the percent, let's reference that on the table, of students who go to movies twice a month or less. So there's a category, a column here of students who go to twice a movie or less. It never distinguishes between action or drama movies. So what do you think we're going to have to do with these two numbers? Yeah, you're right. We're going to add them together. So I'm going to set up a problem for part A. I'm going to cut my note in half and have a B part on the right side. Again, leave space here. We're going to solve the problems in class. Um, so they gave us the total, which is 300. And we do not know what the percentage is because it's asking what percentage. But we do know percents are based on 100. To find this part, we have to add the two numbers in the twice a month or less category. That's 96 plus 102. And you're right, that gets us 198. And again, we'll start solving that problem in class. Let's set up our next one. What percentage, oh, so we don't know what the percentage of students prefer dramas. So we're having to look in the row that talks about dramas because this question doesn't reference twice a month or three times a month. It's just students who go to dramas. So just like the other problem, we know there's 300 students. We don't know what the percent of the students is, but we do know percents are based on 100. To find the part, we have to add the information that was in the drama row. That's 102 plus 60. And that gets us 162. And okay, so I think we may have one more example. Nope, that's it. Thank you again for coming for a, a video lecture with Mr. Kinnett. Uh, please remember to write down questions you have in this question column throughout the note and ask them in class. That means you're interested and you're thinking about it. And again, I'm going to leave you with what skill are we going to recycle on these proportions to solve them? I'll see you tomorrow.